Uh, good evening, everybody. This is the November 8th uh, Administration and Public Works Committee. Uh, my name is Bobby Burns, Councilmember Burns, Fifth Ward, uh, called in the meeting to order. And uh, I do believe we have a quorum, but we have one member uh, that is attending virtually, so we'll do a roll call to begin this evening. Thank you. Councilmember Kelly? Here. Councilmember Braithwaite? Here. Councilmember Newsma? Here. Councilmember Burns? Here. Councilmember Reed? Here. All right, next up, public comment. Uh, let's start with, we have uh, one person that is here to speak. So Joshua Huppert, here to speak on agenda item A22. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, Good afternoon. Yeah, I'm Joshua Huppert. Uh, I live at 2630 Crawford Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm here to comment on item A22, which is about um, parking regulations that affect uh, pedestrians and bicyclists' safety. Um, this, this is a big deal to me, and I, I'm sh I want to explain why, so you don't just think I'm weird, but... Um, one reason it's important to me is that uh, around 20 years ago, my wife was seriously injured in an accident that was, uh, she was riding her bicycle to work in a place where you're allowed to ride on the sidewalk and the sidewalk was illegally obstructed. And so she rode out into the street and uh, when she did that, there, some guy who had been sitting in the driver's seat of a truck open his door right as she was about to ride by. So she hit the door and then she hit the pavement and uh, ambulance came and eventually she had major surgery, but it's 20 years later, she still has problems from that accident. And it was completely preventable. Um, there was a law against obstructing the sidewalk, but it was never enforced. Um, I also happen to live on a block where if I wanna walk, from my house to the corner, a uh, pretty big percentage of the time, I can't do that on the sidewalk because vehicles park on the sidewalk. Uh, years ago, I called the police about that and they said, well, it's a sidewalk in front of a business, so we're not gonna do anything about it. Um, I also, you know, I know the city of Evanston has been making a lot of efforts to get people, make it better, easier to, to walk or ride a bike instead of driving a car everywhere. And I think that's a great idea, you know, partly because of climate and health and everything else. Um, but personally, I would like to ride a bike and walk, but I almost always drive because it just seems too dangerous to, to ride a bike. I, I live near Central Street. The bike lane on Central is almost always blocked at some point. Um, and uh, sidewalks are blocked, people park cars uh, on a crosswalk. I often see at Central and Prairie, the delivery trucks, they park in the crosswalk or like two feet from it. So if I'm driving west on Central Street, I get to Central and Prairie, I can't tell whether a pedestrian wants to cross or not because there's a, a truck parked between where the pedestrian would be and where I am. Um, I, you know, I'm not that shy, so I made some calls, and I eventually spoke to uh, Michael Rivera uh, in the parking department, and uh, he said he agrees with me completely. If a car is parked on the sidewalk, it should get a ticket, and if it's in the crosswalk, it should get a ticket. Um, but that's not what was happening, and um, I think, you know, even though he wants that to happen, there's a long tradition of the parking enforcement officers, and I see this all the time. I saw it last Wednesday. It was street cleaning day, and they're driving around writing tickets for street cleaning. But then the same person who writes a ticket went right past the landscaping truck that had a trailer attached that was completely blocking the sidewalk and halfway blocking the intersection, 
I think on purpose they were blocking the intersection because the people were busy blowing the leaves into the middle of the intersection into piles. And, uh, and the street clean, the guy, the enforcement guy, he writes tickets for street cleaning, goes right past the landscaping truck. And it seems like landscapers are exempt from all parking laws in effect. All delivery trucks are exempt. All contractors are exempt. The only people that get tickets are citizens of Evanston who drive passenger cars. If I blocked a crosswalk, I'd probably get a ticket. But if these out of town trucks, they don't, they don't get a ticket. So I've talked to Mr. Rivera and he's. So he's, we, we only have a, a oh. I'm gonna let you wrap up, but a few more moments if you can bring your comments okay. to a conclusion. Uh, you but know, thank you. I, I looked at the law and I noticed, first of all, there's no law against parking in a bicycle lane in the existing law. There's no, there's no law against it. There is a law that says you can't double park in a bike lane, but you can't double park anywhere. So if you, I see trucks all the time parked in the bike lane and they're not double parked. There's no law against that. The fine for parking the sidewalk is $50, which is less than $75 for street cleaning. But parking on the sidewalk is more dangerous and it's never legal. So, you know, street cleaning, anybody could forget that it's street cleaning day and leave their car there. Uh, Cause most of the time you're allowed to park there, but you're never allowed to park on the sidewalk there. So there's no reason to do it. Um, as far as the proposal that's up here today, I wish it were a lot better. It really, in my opinion, I think there are some mistakes. It doesn't do much. I would like to see something much better. I don't think it does any harm. And maybe it's a start, but uh, I don't know if this committee can improve it or has to go back to staff. But I would like to see a law against parking in the bike lane. And I'd like to see uh, serious fines for parking on the sidewalk or the crosswalk. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is it possible that when you come up to speak just to address some of the current concerns, I, you know, I would say quickly, I work very closely with Ms. Rivera and as a, he's responsible for our parking revenue and I feel like he's equal opportunity all around town. So this is unlike what I'm accustomed to in terms of the service and I would just would like for you to take an opportunity during your time to address the concerns raised at public comment. Thank you. And thank you, sir, for being here. Councilmember Kelly, I saw your light was on, but are you are you good? Or? Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask, and I think you pretty much addressed it, how you would improve um, the current proposal I, I'm, here. I'm sorry. Uh, my, my apologies. I, I do just want to make a motion to go mm -hmm. back to order. Have we completed public comment? It's a little bit of a conversation. No. Uh, Devon? I, I would say... Um, it, it probably is best that we move on to the next public comment. And when we come to this item, 822, we can have a discussion then. And if, if Mr. Huppert has some brief remarks, then we could, we could take them. Um, next up is uh, Trisha Connolly to speak on A8, I believe. Trisha is online. Can you hear me, Trisha? Yeah. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, we can. All right, so A8, um, for anyone out there listening or watching, I will just give you uh, a disclaimer here. I am a big advocate of a pet shelter. I am honored, I am glad we have one here in Evanston and I've got my pet from that shelter as probably at least 80% of people who own pets in Evanston have done. That being said, um, this is really a case of where we're spending money and what makes good moral sense. It is amazing and outrageous to me that we are looking at spending $800,000 to do studies and to get architects involved on something that the city council has not even voted in favor of yet. In a time, a continuum of our city budget and the way we recklessly spend money that, and you know, of course we spend the money, but here's a situation where we don't even commit to doing right for people. We have people sheltered that, you know, there's no plan for their future. 
But yet this is something that we feel that we can just come to the table with and this is a real need. Um, I wanna know tonight, along with many other people, what other cities have been looked at in terms of building a new shelter or expanding services? And how did they do it? And what can we learn from them with a lens of there is a limit of money available. This isn't free range. Like really, we can do some great things within a, a budget that can work without going crazy here. And this just seems completely out of whack. And it seems to me um, the appearance is, you know, it's not a good look. This isn't about having a prioritized budget to help people and animals for that matter. We can do both, but we have to be really, really careful about the funds. Um, you know, I know you're going to talk about it tonight at city council, like where's the money coming from? It's going to be making some choices and some choices are going to be easier than others. So I want to hear tonight how this, um, animal shelter, what, what kind of research has been done at other animal shelters who have redone their spot like pause as an example, they've got a $9 million facility and they're much larger than this one. And the word is that this is gonna be 7 million. We don't need to spend that kind of money right now. Maybe in the future over time with some planning, but boy, we don't even look into the future in our city budget. So like, who knows? It's all up for grabs. Not okay with that. I hope that you will pull back on this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trisha. That includes, uh, concludes public comment. Uh, next up, approval of the minutes. Uh, can someone make a motion to approve uh, October 11th, 2021? I'll make that minutes. motion to approve uh, the minutes of our last meeting, October 11th, 2020, uh, 2021. Second. All right. Any, uh, any changes? All right. Councilmember Braithwaite? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Reed? Aye. Councilmember Kelly? Aye. All right. Oop. Next up, uh, consent calendar. Uh, I am removing A3, A8, A10 uh, off the consent calendar. Um, uh, because of requests from council members. Any other items that we want to remove from the consent calendar? Okay, uh, seeing none, can someone move the consent calendar? Uh, everything except for item A3, A8, A2. Is A22 off? I'm sorry. It's off. Oh, it is. I apologize. Yeah. So, it's, it's not part of uh, consent. All right, can somebody move? Yeah, I'll move item Thank A1, you. approval of the BMO Harris Amazon credit card activity uh, in the dollar amount of $19,205.31. Uh, item A2, approval of the City of Evanston payroll bills list and credit card activity from October 11th through October 24th uh, in the amount of $2,806,037.52 in the bills list for November 9th in the amount of $3,337,437.23. Uh, credit card activity ending August 26th in the amount of 253786.99. Um, then next, A4, approval of contracts with Alexander Chemical Corporation, Polydyne Incorporated, Keras Corporation, and Univar Solutions USA Incorporated for the 2022 water treatment chemicals. This is bid 21-32, uh, total amount of $853,133.22. Uh, item A5, approval of service agreement for upgrades to five elevators at the Maple Avenue garage with Otis Elevator Company. Uh, this is in the amount of $199,875. Item A6, 
approval of billing automation service renewal agreement for the HVAC systems for 2022 through 2024 with Schneider Electric uh, in the amount of uh, $39,006 for 2022, $40,176 for 2023, and forty-one three eighty-two dollars for 2024. Uh, item A7 is the approval of elevator service agreement renewal with Otis Elevator Company for the Civic Center, Service Center, Maple Avenue, and Church Street parking garages for 2022 through 2024. Uh, what's the total dollar amount there? Uh, is it $60,000? No, that's just... 60, 60, and 60. 60, 60, and 60 for each of those entities, total of 180000 uh, item A8 is off consent. Item A9, approval of contract with we equipment. We go back to item A7. Sure. Was this, I was trying to find it in the packet and I missed it. So if you can remove that, I'd appreciate it. Removing A7. A Mr. Chair? Yep, got it's that. removed. A7, A8 yep. is off. Uh, so A9, uh, it remains on consent agenda, approval of contract with equipment management company for the purchase of, uh, for the purchase of two sets of extrication equipment. Uh, this is a total dollar amount of 43384 A10 is off consent. A11, approval of a contract with Water Resources Incorporated for fiscal years 2021 and 2022 water meter purchases not to exceed uh, the amount of 149875 item a uh, 12 approval of a contract with boulder contractors for the 30 inch transmission main construction uh, in the amount of nine million six hundred and eighty six thousand hundred and eighteen dollars Item A13, approval of a contract with Alfred Benish and Company for construction engineering services associated with the 30-inch transmission main rehabilitation project. This is RFP 17-06 uh, in the amount of $747,392. Uh, $747, Item A14, Approval of contract with Benchmark Construction Company Incorporated for large diameter sewer rehab rehabilitation on Greenleaf Street. This is bid 21 35 in the amount of $1,188,060. Uh, item A15 Approval of amendment number one to the contract with WIS Janney. Uh, Elsner Associates uh, Incorporated for Parking Garage Structural Assessment. This is RFP 20 19 in the amount of $115,600. Item A16, this is Resolution 114 R 21, authorizing the mayor to sign a local public agency agreement with the Illinois Department of Transportation for federal participation for the Green Bay Road Corridor Improvement Project Phase Two Engineering. Uh, funding for this project will be from the Capital Improvement Fund, uh, 2021 uh, general obligation bonds in the amount of $203,860, and from the Surface Transportation Grant in the amount of 286120 Item A17, Resolution 115-R-21, authorizing the city manager to sign a local public agency engineering services agreement with Kimley Horn for the Green Bay Road Corridor Improvement Project Phase Two Engineering. Uh, that contract is in the amount of $489,980. Item A18, approval of increase in purchase order 2021-336 by $25,000 for the tennis program at Chandler Newberger Community Center. Item, item A19, uh, resolution 121-R-21, authorizing the city manager to enter into a nine month renewal lease agreement for studio space at the Noise Cultural Arts Center with uh, Evanston Children's Choir. Item A20, resolution 119-R-21, authorizing the city manager to enter into 12-month lease agreements for studio spaces at the Noise Cultural Arts Center. 
And item A21, uh, auth which is resolution 122-R-21, authorizing the city manager to execute an amendment to the grant agreement dated April 16th, 2021, between Cook County Department of Animal and Rabies Control, Evanston Animal Shelter Association, and the city of Evanston. Thus endeth the consent agenda. All right, uh, consent agenda has been moved. Uh, there, is there a second? Second. All right, can we get a vote? Council Member Newsma? Aye. Council Member Burns? Aye. Aye. Yes. Council Member Reed? Aye. Council Member Kelly? Aye. Council Member Braithwaite? Aye. Okay, so that leaves us uh, with A3. Um, can someone make a motion for uh, approval of A3, please? So moved. Is there a second? I will second, second. for the purposes of discussion. All right, and, and just so the audience at home is, is uh, on the same page, this is approval of parking garage rate amendments. Uh, we are open for discussion. Who would like to speak? Who removed this? Was this? Okay, Council Member Newsom. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First question is this, uh, this is coming to us for action. Uh, have we seen this for introduction already? I know we discussed it. No, this is this is just regular business. This is not an ordinance. Okay, so we don't we don't need uh, we don't need two ratings of this. Okay, uh, Mike, would you mind just kind of highlighting the proposal, and um, then we can discuss from there. Sure, uh, Mike Rivera, parking division manager. First of all, I want to just take a moment to acknowledge Josh Hopper for coming out and speaking on behalf of uh, the parking citations. Uh, Josh uh, has actively been a really engaged citizen. He calls me all the time he sends me emails and I even made it a point to give him my personal cell phone and asked him to call me whenever he saw uh, infractions happening in the street or whenever he witnessed our parking uh, enforcement staff not um, uh, actively engaging in, in performing their tasks that he can call me and, and identify those individuals and he's done that on, on a couple of occasions we've had some conversation good conversations with some uh, staff and we've also conveyed our point that we are uh, attempting to uh, enforce all the city, all the city holistically, including of uh, delivery vehicles, postal vehicles, and and any vehicles that park uh, in park blocking the right of way, crosswalks, bike lanes, things of that nature. So, so thank you for that, Josh, for coming out and speaking on behalf of that. Um, with regards to item A3, um, item A3 um, is our parking garages, our 525 uh, Church Street garage, our 1800 Maple, and our 821 Davis uh, parking garages. And what we are attempting is to assess fees. Uh, for the first hour. Currently the first hours are free. They have been free for over 20 years and Sundays are also uh, as well free. So what we're attempting to do is assess fees uh, to the parking garages in, in an effort to bolster uh, the parking services goals for uh, CARP, for uh, EV chargers, for uh, uh, sustainability, for uh, uh, our <clears throat> intent to lower uh, parking rates on other portions of city streets throughout Evanston as we later on will speak to items A2022 20, and 23 I believe. So so this is our um, way to uh, assess fees to the garage that hasn't been done in years uh, before. Uh, currently as you're hearing today we have items A5 coming before you that's uh, elevator contracts. Uh, this you know currently on, on the agenda today there's approximately 200 and Forty thousand dollars worth of elevator contracts. We just performed uh, another elevator op, uh, obsolescence at the A21 garage about uh, three months prior, and that was forty thousand dollars. So uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that we our facilities, while they look new, uh, they're not brand new. One is 20 years of age, one is 15, and the other one is 37 years of age. So as we uh, continue to identify uh, deficiencies in the garages, we need to have monies to also uh, be able to make those repairs to the facilities. So the proposal is uh, to eliminate the first hour free Monday through Saturday and eliminate uh, free parking on Sunday. That, that would be correct. And there's two options. So we laid an option before you that would eliminate the first hour, uh, that would eliminate the first hour and Sundays, and the council would have the option to assess a dollar uh, for that, you know, for any time, for any time uh, frame between zero and 59 minutes 
or we, we have the option to allow 30 minutes free, continue 30 minutes free, and then between 31 and 59 would be a dollar assessment. So I'm sure we can all anticipate the, uh, you know, the objections to taking something away that uh, residents are used to paying uh, no dollars for. Sure. Um, I would respond to that by saying it's only a dollar. Uh, nonetheless, I'm sensitive to uh, you know concerns, especially coming out of the pandemic. That you know we need to make uh, we need to do everything we can to support the, the local businesses downtown. So I think I'm personally leaning towards the half hour free option. Sure. And, and I, mean, I mean, either option will work, will work for us because we haven't had an assessment for so many years. So so we can capture some revenues that we can reinvest into the parking. Uh, services assets you know yeah. this is when I say assets I don't only mean the parking garages but I mean a surface parking lots the parking meter system and, and things of that nature so it's, it's all it's all one system that, that we're working to, towards uh, uh, being productive in the EV chargers that we're talking about do we need additional revenue to pay for those or well, that's that's part of the plan. So our intent is to capture some of these revenues that we're going to be uh, receiving from the assessment of the one hour and the Sundays and reinvest those those monies back into our infrastructure. So we're looking to bolster EV chargers at the Maple Garage. We want to go from two to four at our Sherman Garage. We want to go from six to ten uh, at our at our church garage. We don't offer any EV charging at all. So we want to uh, launch there with four because of the community has been asking for it An EV charger approximate cost for one dual port EV charger seven thousand dollars and then we have to have it installed either with in-house staff or we have to uh, contract to have that installed we have to uh, take on the monthly uh, utility fees and then we have to take on the monthly cl cloud service and any incidentals that come up due to vandalism or just uh, maintenance deficiencies yeah so we're paying for the EV the the regular EV chargers but sure. the Tesla supercharger that's going in that doesn't cost the city anything. Tesla Supercharger is zero contribution on behalf of the city of Evanston, and that will be located at the 1800 Maple parking garage, and that will be the first Tesla supercharging station in all of Evanston. How much is that worth, approximately? That's worth $350,000. They're, they're doing excavation behind the garage as we speak. They're laying new conduits. They're coordinating with ComEd. ComEd is installing a new transformer, and the utility just the utility service just for operating the EV chargers is a 2,000 amp service, which is which is very large. Yeah, so that costs some money. In the Sunday free parking, what was the original reason for offering Sunday free? I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you. It's, 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 been, it's been so long. It's yeah, it's been it's been in place time. over 20 years. I, yeah. I couldn't tell you. I, I think the whole intent was uh, to help the business. Um, the thing is, we don't have a correlation on how. We correlate the parking and the businesses. We, we don't, we're not cross-referencing uh, data of sales tax and parking. I don't have access to data, to, to sales tax data. We don't have, every business doesn't have a validation system. People cannot pay for parking at the business, right, as they're checking out with their wares. Mm -hmm. so, so we don't have a way to correlate that people actually parking in the parking garages are actually going out and, and buying items in the community. Mm -hmm. What's entailed in a validation system? And we discussed this uh, you know, in the context of churches, uh, places of worship that uh, have been using free parking on Sundays. Sure. So, so that's another thing that we're looking into. So currently we have um, uh, an archaic validation system, which is a manual uh, machine that you will put at a location. Um, typically, the, the location will request it. They'll, they'll purchase the validator. We'll program, you know, the rate um, if, the, if the business or the, uh, the house of worship or something is willing to take on the fees. And then um, we'll program, you know, if it's going to be one hour, two hour, three hour validation, they'll allow the tickets to run through the machine, uh, be validated, free to the customer, and then the city of Evanston will perform an invoicing at the end of the month to those organizations, and, and they, will, they will pay us. With technology advances as, as what it has, now there's online validations and then there's QR codes that you can use uh, with your phones. So the city is currently, right now we have two proposals and we're looking exactly into uh, installing QR codes in the parking garages and then that'll allow us to perform, uh, to, to offer discounts, that'll allow us to direct traffic when we have, let's say, a festival downtown on Sherman and we issue a special for parking it'll direct traffic to a particular garage because we can offer the special and people won't come into town and circulate they will come into town and go direct to the garage okay. with their with their coupon so validating just transfers the cost from the individual to the organization correct. it doesn't correct. eliminate the cost. Correct. correct it does it does okay. well i mean you know it depends on the negotiation on behalf of the city right if the city wants to uh enter into negotiations with certain businesses or new businesses coming 
coming online. I mean, like uh, we have the new movie theater complex that's proposed for 1700 Maple. Um, if that's something that the city wants to negotiate, uh, a certain window of, of time to be validated through those organizations. We, we have contemplated that uh, in the past before. All right, I'll defer to my colleagues if they have questions. Uh, Councilmember Kelly. So um, do you have an estimated um, projection for revenue when you take into account both, you know, fees and folks paying their parking, their parking fees and the fines, but then also offset by the cost of um, s staff to, um, additional additional staff okay I, I don't understand the question estimate for what for like what, what would for this revenue what what are we expecting to generate in terms of revenue by having eliminating the one hour free okay so on page 74 he outlines three hundred and sixty six thousand dollars in six hundred and four three hundred and sixty six thousand six hundred and four in revenue correct and that's and that's that's using the 2021 data so so through uh, last week, I believe, when we pulled the data, we had issued 366,000 first hour free uh, tickets in the three garages combined. In, in 2019, we had issued over 700,000. Um, so these are tickets? No. The, the, this, this, would, this, would, this would be the transient ticket as you arrive to the parking garage and you pull the transient ticket to park into the facility. Right. That's what I'm referencing when I say, I'm sorry, not, not ticket citation in, in the terms of citations, but the ticket to enter and exit the facility. Okay, so mm -hmm. 366,000 is what you're estimating that would be generated? Oh, no, by that's actual this year, so far, and we still have a month and a half to go. So what is the, I'm just trying to get a, a handle on what, including the additional labor involved to you know, ticket and monitor, what are we expecting to gain from eliminating? The, the labor in the garages is, is not going to, um, we're not going to take on additional labor because that's contracted already. We have a third party vendor that we contract at the parking garages. So regardless if we charge for the first hour or not, uh, that, that number is not going to change. That's going to be the same for, as far as labor costs. What do I mean in terms of ticketing? and uh, The city routinely enters the parking garages to you know search for license plates they may have outstanding tickets or outstanding uh purchase of a wheel tax or things of that nature if a vehicle is on a, a boot eligible which boots have been suspended since march of 2020 we haven't seen booted a single vehicle in over a year um so typically that's that's just normal practice we would do that so so that isn't something that we would take on additionally okay. if i could just jump in here as a point of information is i'm taking my takeaway here is that if we Eliminated the first hour free entirely. We'd bring in about four hundred thousand dollars a year. That's correct. If we did half hour free, we'd bring in about two hundred thousand dollars a year. That's correct. So, so point of, I was again a point of information on top of that. I'm sorry. I just do, do want to make a, a fact clear that uh, that that four hundred thousand dollar number is based on like pandemic parking rate uh, uh, usage. Pandemic parking usage is not based on. Uh, actual parking usage in years prior. If we were to look at this in a in a regular year pre-pandemic, this would please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Rivera. Uh, but we're talking like seven hundred, maybe eight hundred thousand dollars. Seven hundred thousand plus, correct. Seven hundred thousand plus. Thank you. So it's not just four hundred. It's it's this is substantial money. Uh, so just that point of information. Apologies, Councilmember Kelly. If you could. Uh, do you have any other questions, comments? Yeah, I, I do feel it's important. I mean, our downtown is still suffering tremendously and doesn't look so hot still, and it's so important right now. I think that cross-referencing cross -referencing that you mentioned, as well as you know the correlations, we really do need to do those studies in terms of revenue. I know plenty of people that go to Wilmette because they can just pull up and park. I know myself. I'll pull up and park, so I'll put in my number, and I forget. I mean, I, so all these things, not only in terms of to really understand how much revenue we're actually generating. I think it's really vital right now that we do know those numbers, but I think we also have to take into consideration quality of living. So I think both those things have to be taken into consideration um, and weighed against that number that you know we're getting here. I our, think that's really, really important. If we want to see our, our downtown start to thrive, um, we really do want to uh, remove any obstacles. Sure, thank you. And, and just so that you're aware, our current numbers in the three parking garages through um, through today, uh, is our current revenue is 3.170. Our total expenses are 2 million. So this is through today, so, and, and we still have a month and a half to go. Um, so you can see what some of the numbers look like in the garages. They're not, they're not really that high, given the fact that we have uh, so much expense in the parking garages. And then also, um, uh, the, the other item that I have in the agenda, item 823, also addresses um, 
uh, more affordable parking rates throughout more business districts, throughout all the business districts in the city of Evanston. So as we as we look to put, assess fees in this garage, we're also looking to lower fees in underutilized areas adjacent to all business districts, and we want to lower those fees from two dollars per hour to fifty cents per hour, and allow people to park for up to twelve hours. So th this this in essence will create more parking equity, will help uh, bolster the businesses and and help uh, with business employee retention, especially when the people primarily using those parking spaces. But that's in low usage, I'm sorry. I mean, let's be clear, that we're, you're talking about like 50 cents an hour in areas where there are low, low frequency. Yes. Right, so. Yes, yes. Uh, Council Member uh, Thank you, Chair Burns. And so, Council Member Kelly, I'm so glad you brought that up because I hear the same thing often making comparisons our downtown Evanston to downtown Wilmette, right? So, First of all, there is no comparison between downtown Evanston and downtown Wilmette with no respect to our suburb. But then I also want to point out something that, and thank you for including this in, in, the, in the packet that we've all had a chance to read. So if you pay for street parking, which I'll speak for myself, not going on council or the town, like I'm going to take a spot on the street before I go to the parking garage. That's just a normal, a normal behavioral pattern. And so no, I, I don't think that anyone would want to make an argument to remove the street parking for an hour and lose that revenue. So I, 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 I see the garage as a, as a no brainer that, that we do this to capture that revenue. So that's, that's, that's number one. So I'm going to support this. And then, uh, I had another point that I wanted to to make, but I think I'll I'll come back. But thank you, thank you very much. I'm willing to support this. Uh, it's definitely more affordable to park in the garage for an hour, and uh, I definitely like the opportunities of shopping downtown Evanston versus Wilmette. Thank you, Councilmember Reed. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I will agree with you, Councilmember Burns. Uh, I didn't know that our goal uh, was to make uh, Evanston like little men. I, I thought we were trying to do something different here. Um, I, uh, I, I also support this measure. I think it makes a lot of sense to capture uh, the, the, the revenue. Um, you know, as we said, I really, you know, particularly when this is coupled with uh, the proposal to lower parking rates in other areas of the city, uh, particularly, you know, I, I, again, correct me if I'm incorrect, uh, Mr. Rivera, but one of those areas is in, some of those areas are in my ward uh, where we could certainly use, and, and they're all across the city where we could certainly use um, um, some relief. If we lower the parking rates in those areas, yes, they're underutilized, but they may become more utilized uh, with those lower parking rates. And so that's why I'm excited that this proposal allows uh, for uh, that equity um, and particularly looking forward to seeing you know how this uh, works in years to come I know Mr. Rivera has also um, I don't think it was mentioned yet today but it may be in the memo I know we've had conversations about also being able to provide uh, using those QR codes and the new uh, electronic validation still being able to provide uh, free parking uh, in the garages during uh, major snow events and, and at other times uh, when the city seem, sees necessary. So I think uh, altogether, I think we should go with the full hour. Um, you know, how great it would be for us to take some of this revenue um, and, and invest it into making our downtown uh, more desirable and doing some place making uh, and even making the garages uh, more desirable. I think uh, Alderman Brithwaite's point uh, that, you know, he and I think many other folks, or this has been expressed to me by residents, uh, folks choose to park on the street rather than in garages because garages sometimes feel uh, quite often uninviting. They're kind of like uh, dark gray caves. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, it's really exciting to see that we can invest uh, some of these funds in making our garages more inviting. Uh, I love the idea that we're going to invest in uh, the green infrastructure, uh, having those Tesla charging stations. Um, and, and I think it's just not Tesla, it's other EV vehicles as well, but having those charging stations uh, I wish there was a way um, that we could measure the impact. I mean, certainly we'll know, uh, you know, how many folks use it, but I'd love to see uh, how many new folks are bringing to town, uh, you know, with with these charging stations as there aren't, uh, you know, they're not universally available, particularly the supercharger. 
So thank you, Mr. Rivera. I, I support this. Um, before I go to Councilmember Kelly for a second time, uh, a, a business owner downtown reached out, and I'd like to to quickly read a a, a portion of her email, um, uh, Manager Rivera, just so you can respond to it. So the business owner said, "When I navigated through approval meetings last year for my business with Design and Project Review Board, Plan Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals, and ultimately the City Council." It was paramount and strongly encouraged by city staff that I provide a comprehensive parking plan for my business. Uh, per Michael Rivera's recommendations, we accounted for the one hour complimentary parking in the Maple Avenue garage as an integral uh, component of our plan, which was analyzed thoroughly by every committee. Uh, this complimentary parking removes a hurdle for current and potential customers of my business, as well as a number of other businesses within Church Street Plaza. Um, I, I know. This, the business owner references some committees that you may not sit on, but do you have any any response to to that? Or if if you don't, if someone, maybe our city manager, she's here, but I, this business owner referenced the committee process. Can you highlight the question? I was listening. Um, it. So it's the business owner said with. Uh, it, it was paramount and strongly paramount and strongly encouraged by city staff that I provide a comprehensive parking plan for my business. Per Michael Rivera's recommendations, we accounted for the one-hour complimentary parking in the Maple Avenue garage as an integral component of our plan, which was analyzed thoroughly by every committee. Um, and the committee she referenced earlier it was designed the Project Review Board, Plan Commission, and Zoning Board. I see Joanna here. I don't know if you want to speak to it, and, and maybe it just doesn't apply, but she referenced committee, city committee. She met, referenced that she was advised to do something, so I just wanted well, a quick. I'm sorry, can you tell me which business this is? Yeah. Um, uh, good evening, I Department tried to hold on Development Director. Yeah. So we, yeah. yeah, we we generally, so I'm the chair of the Design and Project Review Committee, which is a staff committee of different departments that review development, and um, generally questions surround uh, issues of where your employees are going to park. Right. We don't want employees parking in front of businesses. So um, to my knowledge, we've never required anybody to provide a comprehensive parking plan for their, their business. We usually ask cursory questions such as, where are your employees going to park? And I suspect that that particular business probably said, we will put parking in the parking garage or our landlord is going to, that they've made some accommodation and certainly a one hour free parking would not help um, somebody who's going to be there for more than a few hours. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of their, if I recall, um, I believe that there was some you know, pick up and drop off discussions for, for pets um, that on that stretch of, of Clark there. But I, I don't remember we required any kind of comprehensive parking. And, um, and then on top of that, when they do zoning approvals, they have to go through a zoning analysis, which makes sure that they have enough of parking, which is often accommodated through parking garages. Thank you. That's really helpful. Uh, and Mike. This business or any business could uh, negotiate a uh, or or work with you or the city to uh, to do valid valid uh, sure sure they, station they, parking for their customers sure they they could and just just now that I, I'm aware of the business we have worked with this business already um, our current garage rate in the in the Maple Garage is $115 a month we offer an employee an Evanston employee a downtown employee and Evanston downtown business owner rate which is $60 per month if they specifically park on the roof of that facility and I am aware that uh, she has three or four monthlies that she has already uh, uh, initiated at the $60 an hour rate and in preparation of her business opening um, uh, one of the recommendations through the Dapper Committee was if we can look at the parking restrictions on the 900 block of Clark Street, which is just adjacent to the Chili's front door, and see if we can lower the threshold from two-hour parking to 30-minute parking to help create turnover so people can, you know, arrive and pick up and drop off their pets. And, and that has also been completed on that stretch of the road. So, so they have um, approximately eight spaces there adjacent to the business, uh, and it's also was helpful to the Chili that has the uh, the pickup uh, window adjacent to that area as well. Uh, Councilman Kelly. Um, thank you. So um, I just want to say again that we really don't know the impacts on revenue, and I and I feel like we should not be doing something like this in isolation. Um, we should be doing it comprehensively with considering our downtown, with talking to business owners, and not just simply figuring on how much revenue 
parking, the parking department will generate. Um, so I, I do feel very strongly about that. And with regard to my comment about Wilmette, um, being a ward on the north end, I was referencing many residents who go to Wilmette to shop because it's easy to just pull in, stop at the hardware store, run in, get, come out. And so that's what my reference was. However, it behooves us to look at other cities in all aspects. We should always be looking, comparing, and contrasting what we're doing with Wilmette, with Skokie, with Chicago. We should be doing this. This is what we do to get for our residents. We absolutely should be doing this. So there's no shame in making references to other surrounding cities um, to talk about what they're doing, whether it's working or not. That That is our obligation um, as stewards of our budget and, and our city. So, um, so again, I... I'm concerned um, about the the full impact of this, and so without you know greater study on this re with regard to revenue and to um, you know take bringing our local business owners into this discussion for their full input, I I, I just I can't get excited about this. Uh, Councilmember Braithwaite, uh, thank you very much, sir. and I'll so this is off script. I just sometimes if I don't say it, I will forget it. So forgive me for a moment. So we all know that Church Street uh, Plaza was recently sold and, and the owner has some very aggressive ideas and, and opportunities with, with new businesses. So I see the, you know, everything working out fine with, with a parking garage. One of the things that I'm hoping to do is to schedule a time to meet with you. You mentioned the area around Chili's that just happens to be in order. I'm, I'm starting to hear more and more from our businesses, particularly the restaurants where the takeout model is working for their for their businesses. So I think you've mentioned this along the way. If you could just touch on what your vision is for downtown Evanston for those restaurants or maybe make a comment right now. Sure. What do they do if they want to put a a a curbside pickup like a Chili's and other restaurants around the right. downtown so, area. So, so typically there are loading zones in the city of Evanston are not business specific. So, so typically they're initiated by, by a business if they have a lot of traffic and they'll, they'll present that to the parking services department and we'll evaluate the block and see what the, what the uh, composition of businesses are in the block and then we'll determine if, if, if they can uh, all benefit from a, a strategically placed load zone, right? And we, and we will do that. Uh, something that myself and staff have been discussing is, uh, you know, due to the COVID pandemic, more and more businesses started doing the curbside pickup and it became an essential part of their businesses. So we have been um, talking about contemplating uh, and bringing to, to APNW and City Council is a paid load zone. So, so we would allow businesses to apply for a business specific load zone. It would be in the same metered areas that currently are a parking meter would exist, but instead of it being a two hour limit, or a 12-hour limit, it would be a 15-minute limit or perhaps a 30-minute limit, and then individuals parking, you can, utilizing those spaces to park while picking up food would still be uh, have to pay for that for that parking, but it would create turnover uh, every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, and, and people would have space for their clients to pick up and drop off food. Um, also, with regards to to <coughs> comparable analysis to to other cities, uh, we are in the midst of a parking study that we that we launched on September 27th with WGI. Um, I have also uh, just shared an interview with um, the parking manager of Anaheim, California, and his name is John uh, No, I believe it, it was, and, and they're in the same situation that we are. They have nine parking garages, approximately 6,000 spaces, and they were offering an hour and 30 minutes free for over 20 years, and they have amassed over $13,000 of deferred maintenance in those facilities, sure. and they just, their city council just voted within the last 30 days to uh, assess fees to that hour and 30 minutes sure. as well. Thank you for that information. Uh, before we call the vote, and I think this is going to be the thing f for me for this evening, and I am, I am going to support this, I would like until that personally, until the study is done, um, and certainly during during COVID, to, to, um, to implement the 30 minutes free would be, uh, would, be, would, would be something I could support, although I'm happy to move this on to the full council. Um, as is for now, and, uh, and so we can have further discussion. But I do want to say that, and, and I think I, I came to realize this even more when I uh, was was provided this this wonderful opportunity to serve the community as council member. Is that look, you know, vehicles are not um, cost neutral; they're not uh, carbon neutral. There is a, a health impact, environmental impact, a financial impact of driving a motor vehicle. 
And um, it's it, we're all on the hook, not just the community at large, but everybody up here um, to, to generate enough revenue to, to, to maintain our garages, our roads, et cetera. And this is just a part of that. Um, so it's, I think it's necessary. Um, and I think every city has to figure out how to, how, to, how to do this, how to generate revenue. Again, it's not cost neutral. Um, there's other ways to get downtown, and we'll try to keep the costs as low as we can and be thoughtful about it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to all the, the, the plans so that we can be, we, we know exactly how to, um, how to, um, you know, how to, how to, how to administer, the, you know, our parking program here in Evanston. But, uh, I just want to, for, for my residents in the fifth ward, but also for the community at large, just let you know my position on it. We're, we're all on the hook. We got to generate revenue to take care of these things. And I don't think we're, we're generating enough right now. Councilmember Newsom. I'm with you, uh, Councilmember Burns, about, I think, half hours the way to go for right now. Uh, maybe at some point in the future, we, uh, we take it uh, to the full hour. Um, and I do want to keep Sundays free as well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to move this along to Council and have, a, have the discussion again. So can I just, we have a pretty healthy agenda. And if we're going to talk about it at Council, um, Mike, if we... I'm resistant to holding because I want to be mindful of the time, but maybe just a little bit more outreach. This will probably save us at least 20 minutes tonight. If you, if you need to do it, just based on budget concerns, and we'll take the time to do it, but we're asking for about another extra 20, 25 minutes at council. So time sensitive, push it, or can we... Well, uh, part, part of the reason why we brought it to committee now is because we're trying to make an implement. We're trying to get it enough. approved and implemented into the budget. In, I get into it. 2022 operating we'll budget. Correct. So, I, I mean, if, if Council Member Newsma wants to make a motion to omit Sundays, I would like to have the one dollar for the first hour, the for complete first hour, um, on, on the front side. You know, instead of the 30 minutes. Because um, yeah, I don't see how you would. I mean, that makes it difficult to enforce and now we're diverting resources to try to catch someone for a half an hour versus just going ahead with the full hour. We're, Once you're there, we're you're not there. this we're talking about parking garages. So there's not a parking officer patrolling, right? It's you go into the garage, you get a get the ticket. Fair, right. right? I, so I stand corrected with that. My question would be how easy is it to make that adjustment with the current system? It, it's easy to make that adjustment. To, it's, excuse me. It's easy to make that adjustment, but not taking items um, 822 and 823 into consideration. Part of the reason why we were asking for the increase on the Sunday and the, and the first hour was to be able to subsidize those programs and identified in item A, 822 and 823. Pay today or pay tomorrow? Uh, would half <laughs> price on pay. Sunday be? An option. I, I mean, like I said, I mean we could omit Sunday completely. I understand because there is some religious institutions, you know, in downtown area in proximity to the to the garages. Um, I, so long as we can keep the first hour, I, I think that would be a reasonable compromise. Uh, one moment, Councilmember Newsom, would you, uh, would you want to make any amendments on the floor here? Or are you fine moving this on to, to Council to well, discuss? Well, I think that's where Councilmember Braithwaite was going. What's the best way to have this conversation in a timely manner? Should we hold it, work on these issues offline, and come back next time with uh, with a proposal that we're all on board with? I'm personally ready to to move it on to Council, but um, oh but that's up to you know, I would say let's just call a vote at some point. Councilman Reed, you have the last word on this, and we're gonna we're gonna either call a vote yeah. or, or make an amendment. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to see the full proposal. I'm supportive of you know the Sunday is free. Uh, I don't know why we do that necessarily. It's not like Sunday is some huge economic day for downtown in the first place. But I'm happy to support eliminating the charging for Sundays and keeping the hour. Um, the you know the hour alone provide substantial revenue. Uh, I think uh, Councilmember Burns, for the reasons that you, uh, you know, almost very eloquently, uh, you know, stated there uh, during your explanation for your, your support of this, uh, I think of the reasons why we need to go the full measure, um, and particularly coupled with uh, Mr. Rivera's uh, forward-thinking progressive proposal to use this revenue to offset uh, other areas of our city. You know, our downtown you know, while it's struggling now during COVID, gets a lot of love and attention from the city council. And 
Uh, we have business districts all across the city, including in my ward, that need uh, you know, the, the support of the city and reducing parking rates to provide equity for those areas and offsetting that with our wealthier downtown is a, the progressive thing to do, particularly when uh, we know that we aren't, you know, it was like everything you said, Councilmember Burns, we aren't fully uh, um, uh, 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 keeping up with the uh, keeping our facilities in tip top shape and, 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 and bearing the cost, uh, the, the auxiliary cost. Uh, to to owning vehicles and operating vehicles in the city limits. So I'm hoping we can move forward with the full measure. If not, I'm certainly supportive of Sundays. Uh, yeah, being I would hope we can move it forward today. And, and uh, But Councilmember Newsom, if you have any amendments you would like to make. Uh, what if we move it to council? I can make my amendment at council. Okay. Um, all right, so it's been, uh, motion has been made. It's been seconded. We've had a good discussion. We're going to call the vote. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Reed? Aye. Councilmember Kelly? No. Councilmember Braithwaite? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? No. But it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, yeah me too. Okay, uh, Mike, thank you. Thank Manager you. Rivera, thank you. Um, okay, that m we moves us to A, what is it, A8? Uh, AA approval of amendment number one to the contract with. Uh, sorry, we are on A7. Uh, approval of elevator service agreement re renewal with Otis Elevator Company for the Civic Center uh, Service Center, Maple Avenue, and Church Street parking garages for 2022 through 2024. Can someone make the motion yeah. for approval? Uh, move for approval. Any, a second? Second. All right, discussion. Quick question, Sean. I, I pulled this off. So I was reading, I was reading through it and I was looking at our, in the contract, particularly for the Civic Center. Right now we're under study just to explore moving. So I, no one can predict the future. So my only question that I wasn't able to find is if for whatever reason we decided not to be here for the next four years, are we locked into that $60,000 between now and 20, 2024? Uh, chair and members of the committee, Sean Cholick, Facilities and Fleet Management. Um, so right now, you know, the, the three-year agreement, um, usually there's some language in there that if we give them enough notice, I'd have to double check out. and make sure that, that that is included in there. Cool. Um, we've never had to do it with Otis before, but usually there's, there's typically some language in there that will allow us to, to get out of a contract with sufficient notice. Um, so I can take a look at that and confirm and get back to you if you'd like. Yeah, it's um, for action, so and, that's and the I, reason. Yeah, right. And, and um, you know, the three years, I think, is is probably pretty sufficient for us to, to get make a decision and get out of this building. Um, I think that if we do move out of here, it's going to take a little bit of time I to agree. plan. And, and by that point, I would imagine three years would be over. All right. Thank you for looking into it. All right. Luke, you can take it away. Did we have a, a motion on the second one that already? Okay. Councilmember Reed? Aye. Councilmember Kelly? Aye. Councilmember Braithwaite? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. All right. A8 approval of amendment number one to the contract with. Uh, with Ho Hollabird? Hollabird. Hollabird and Root for Architectural and Engineering Services for the Evanston Animal Shelter Improvements, RFQ 20-53. Uh, Can I get a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. All right. Discussion? Councilmember Kelly. Um, let's see, just a few questions. Um, why, can, could you explain why there's a... Um, a zone, zoning, a cost for zoning approvals. So typically when we uh, solicit a cost proposal from uh, an architect, we define the meetings that they're going to have to attend and do presentations at. In this particular case, there's a zoning overlay district, and so they have to go for zoning approval even though it is a city facility. So what, what do we need approval for? 
I mean, what it's so it's already right. We have an animal shelter. What's could you just walk me through a little bit what we need to? So anytime uh, it essentially because it's a new building, it operates like a planned unit development because it's in a zoning overlay district, with is, which is a particular classification. Okay, jo Johan and I can explain this better than I can okay. probably. Uh, good evening. Uh, so that where the animal shelter is located is in a zoning overlay district that requires a plan unit development. We're not entirely sure why that particular area of Evanston on the south side of Oakton um, has that particular overlay. The recycling center is also in it. But any any development, any new construction has to go through a plan development process no, there. No matter the size. No matter the size. Okay, okay thank you. Um, and then can you tell me, is the agreement with them, is it all inclusive of the entire project, including permitting, permitting revisions, construction administration, charge over, charge order review? Yes. The, the current agreement is for all of the design and construction services. Okay. And, and really quickly, just for those at home, at the microphone is Laura Biggs, Engineering and Capital Planning Bureau Chief for the City of Evanston. Uh, Councilman Kelly. Okay, thank you. And um, the conceptual di design is already complete, correct? Yes. Okay, so why is there another fee listed for that here? Um, I'd have to, so let me, huh, let me just clarify. So the, in architect terms and engineering terms, they sometimes phrase things a little differently. So they've completed what architects refer to as the pre-conceptual design. The conceptual design is, is where they sort of lay out the building and um, size all the spaces and then the detailed design that they'll move into after that which is preparing the contract documents will detail all of the things that a contractor needs to know to build the project. So what they've actually completed is called the pre-concept pre design on this project. Okay. Um, and what is, can you describe what technology design is at 14,400, what that, what that refers to? I can get you more detailed information, but I believe that is concerning um, things like the data cabling that goes throughout a building to hook up computers. And like in this building, our telephones are operated through data cabling. So it would be that design laying out all of the um, communications cabling that and uh, technology pieces associated with communications. Um, because we don't always see that when we're, uh, so in their proposal, they provided a detailed breakdown, which is on page 125 of the packet, which does describe it. It includes information technology, the equipment for the, and room components for the, in the horizontal cabling the security management system, including the alarm systems for the perimeter, and the audiovisual systems, which includes a couple of digital signing locations, and um, there's a training room and conference room. A, a, tra a conference room? So it's a it's a multi-purpose public education training conference room. We'll probably use for um, mass va uh, public vaccination events. It's just a versatile space. Okay, um, and commissioning is listed in there too. Could you just describe what is commissioning? Uh, once the, so there's a part of the project is to divide, design the HVAC systems and it has become standard but is particularly required on lead certification projects that you have a third party come in and test to make sure the HVAC systems are working properly. This is a common problem in all buildings that HVAC has become so complicated over the years that it almost always needs adjustment beyond what the initial contractor does uh, in order to get it to work properly. Okay. Um, okay. And let's see. So will they, will this company, um, Hall what is it called? Hall 
Halliburton and Root. And Root, will they be accountable to keeping the design in line with our budget? I mean, what's the... Yes. So it's a partnership. The, they are accountable for giving us good costing information on the selections that we choose, but the city also is accountable into making sure that we don't choose things that dramatically increase the cost. So when we want to make selections or decisions, then they are accountable for telling us that those things might cause the project to increase. Okay. So I, I guess I'm still, anyway, it's, you know, still money, 14,000, but it seems like wouldn't the technology be under the electrical engineering? Uh, no, typically it's, it's a different specialty. It may be, but when you break down a project, um, it's technology, uh, communications technology is broken out differently because it's different equipment than electrical. Electrical tends to be like plugs and switches and circuit breakers and switch gear. Okay, and then, and what's the, um, the environmental surveying and reporting? I mean, wouldn't we, don't we already have that since we have a animal shelter there already? What is that about? Um, so no, uh, we do not have good records of what the geotech looks like. We've done a limited amount um, just in preparation for the project, but uh, they will do detailed soil boring. They'll test the soil for any soil that has to be excavated and removed. Is it a hazardous waste? Is it a special waste? And um, so they will make sure basically this is a lot about how your foundation system goes in to avoid building settlement. They have to do a lot of environmental testing and geotech for that. Um, and I'm sorry if I, I can, is there, so do we know we're talking about roughly 8,000 square feet? Uh, around 8,500. Around 85, okay. And do we know approximately what the cost per square foot is that we're looking at for this project? Uh, so cost per square foot, I issued a budget memo that went in um, Friday's packet, November 5th, but it can be kind of a challenge to, because different people include different things in cost per square foot. The building itself, we're using a cost per square foot of $325 per square foot. But when you add in the site improvements to get to the total construction, it comes out to, but you lay it on just the building cost, it's about $465 per square foot. Thank you, thank you, Laura. And so, I mean, I just, I just want to clarify um, some of the comments. You know, dovetailing a little bit off what Tricia Connolly did say, I am also concerned about the way we are prioritizing. We haven't yet voted on a budget. Everything's very askew this year, with an influx of you know over forty-three million dollars. Um, and I am concerned that we are not. We we've only voted on accepting the grant, um, two million dollars in grant money, which came with expectations in terms of what, how we would service, but not, there was no strings attached in terms of what we were obligated to invest in terms of dollar amount. We also voted on $100,000 for this, I believe it was for the same firm, um, and that's it. So right now we're going on this assumption that council is prepared to spend upwards of $7 million on an animal shelter. And, and I have, and, and a full disclaimer, I've adopted four animals from that shelter. Okay, I, I feel connected to that shelter, and this is just about fiscal accountability. Um, I also would like to know what efforts, I know now the trend is really to spend money in training people to foster, to pay people to learn to foster, and paying people then to foster animals. That's, you know, supposed to be far better for animals. And so, you know, it feels to me too like funds should be going towards that. So I'm just, I'm a little bit concerned that this seems like a very um, luxurious, that we're, you know, sort of $7 million animal shelter for the town our size, um, that we need to be looking at this in terms of our, all of our priorities and not, um, and not sort of piecemealing, we spend $7 million here, another $8 million, but really evaluated against our needs as a city against our needs for our homeless population, against all our needs. And I'm not saying we don't have needs for the animal shelter. I support the animal shelter. I just want to make sure that we're doing this fully responsibly and acknowledging the priorities of this city um, when we decide to take on a $7 million project and also to assess it against other cities and other projects to make sure if we do go forward that we are in fact getting the very best bang for our buck here, um, square footage and otherwise. Thank you. Councilmember Newsman. 
Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Laura, one question about the uh, environmental survey, the soil conditions. Given the proximity to Mount Trashmore, have we taken that into account? Was this former landfill, uh, was, is this property uh, former landfill? This property, we believe, is not actually in the landfill area that James Park was, most of James Park is in. However, it was a previous industrial use and so we anticipate that we may have some sort of contamination within the soils. And so those contingencies are built into the uh, budget? Yes. If the soil borers come up clean, we'll save money on the total project? Yes. Great, thanks. Um, and uh, relevant to uh, Trisha Connolly's uh, public comment, how does this project compare to similar projects in other communities? Um, so there in that budget memo that got issued there's some other similar facilities uh, that the architect has worked on mm -hmm. and they ranged um, to like 350 to 480 dollars per square foot uh, type of range and she mentioned pause and I, I just took a moment to look that up that was a project where uh, they spent $9 million on a 20,000 square foot build out that was space that was undeveloped within their existing building. So had a foundation, walls, roof, and then they built it out. And so at that rate, it's still like say 400, $450 per square foot compared to our 465. But we have to build a building and a parking lot and other exterior improvements. Great, thank real, you. Real quick to jump in, so that that is that was one of my questions too. So the cost difference is in that we need to we're starting with a foundation. What what is the what is the cost difference between that nine million and what we're spending at six million? Is it that we're starting from? So I don't want to mislead you that I know very much about the pause expansion at all because they literally just released press releases that they were doing it that they'd finished it in the last week. And I just looked it up. But from the article I read, they, they're in a building that had, that they owned that had extra space that was not finished out. And then they finished it out as a medical, an animal medical facility and did some remodeling in their existing spaces. And um, so I don't know entirely what was involved in their project. Um, I don't even know if the $9 million includes just the construction cost or also includes architects and engineering. Um, it's hard to say because that's not the kind of information people put in press releases. And then um, it, it says that the, um, it, it, in the memo it lists out the costs to, for the whole construction of the proposed or uh, the yeah the proposed amount for the construction of the new animal shelter and then it says with the appropriate scope of work and these uh, ap approximate costs in mind staff negotiated amendment number one etc so um if 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 we knew that it wasn't going to cost 6.3 million or whatever it was it was 4 million would that change would that re lower potentially lower the costs uh for engineering in in, in the architectural work that we're? Yes. Okay, because that is a concern. I would like to know a dif the difference between the pause project, which not only Tricia, but we were received an email from Mary about it. That That is a, a big difference. It's a much larger area, and they were able to do those renovations for $9 million, and we're looking at $6.3 million for a much smaller space. As far as I understand, it's 8,500 square foot is what we're looking at. Um, I'm sorry. But, well, that's uh, that's I mean, why I said, is I that the difference? Say, yeah, I, yeah, want, I just want a definitive difference. answer, yeah, on the, yes. what is the difference between and what we're is, doing here. These projects are not apples to apples. Yeah. The, they took a building space where they own a building that's unfinished and they finished it out. And we have to demolish and build a new building while providing animal sheltering services during that same time period So in a on a site that is not great quality in terms of being able to build on it, but we also have to provide a parking lot, exterior dog runs, and various other site improvements, stormwater detention. So uh, we're just talking about two entirely different concepts for how you would do things. 
On a square foot basis, their project costs would likely be much less than ours okay. because they don't have to do all the site work and build the building. They just have to furnish it. Okay, Councilmember Kelly, you have the last word on this, and then we're going to call the vote. Okay, um, so it's one story, correct? I think this is a one story building, right? Uh, hold on. Can you ask that question again, Councilmember Kelly? It's a one, we're talking about a one story building. It is a one story and building. So, and the, the foundation study is to, in part, in large part, to ensure that it doesn't settle, right? And, yes. And we had that issue with Crown, right? Settling in the gla there, glass crack. There's been no settlement at Crown. There's been no settling, okay. Um, again, I, you know, my issue here is that we're, we're talking about this price of $700,000 for consulting architect that this is based on um, you know, a 10% of a $7 million, and I, we haven't yet, we haven't really discussed what city council has the appetite to spend on an animal shelter, and so um, I, th I think we're not doing this in the right order. I think we have had that discussion, didn't we, or am I not? We, had a, we didn't vote. We had a discussion. We saw, you know, door number one, two, three, this mil, mil, five, four million, six million, nine million. We saw, but we didn't vote on anything. We didn't go into it in detail. It was very just broad brush stroke. So what is, when is the next opportunity where we will take official action on that question? The question of do we pay 6.3 million, which I would imagine is what staff is saying is, is the cost of this project, when, but when are we going to take an official, more official action on that, on that question? Well, normally at this point, um, we have, to my understanding, been given direction to proceed with a certain design and we plan to go design that and then we would send it out to bid and then it would come back here for construction. Right, so I think we've reached that point. What? But, but I think there were different needs. There's sort of a minimum needs, and I think we haven't yet agreed on what, what do we feel is, what do we want to cover? Because there's, you know, like there's a carport. In one of the proposals, they put a carport, which they don't really need a carport at the animal shelter. And so we haven't really discussed, really settled on what are the, what minimally do we need for that animal shelter? And by the way, I think Lawrence Hemingway did say that Crown settled. He said that that was the cause of, so I don't know. He was mistaken then, I guess, but. So, so anyway, so that's, you know, we, there's a lot of vari variations on what we could have in an animal shelter. Do you think the cost could change significantly to where that would change the cost of engineering and architectural work that we're looking at today? So normally I would say we're probably pretty good at this, but we're in the middle of a global pandemic and we've been seeing all kinds of crazy stuff happen. So take the pandemic factor out and I think that we are in a pretty good place. If we were to advertise this for bid and it would come back much, much higher, I mean, that's definitely a point at which the city council would have the opportunity to interject and it has happened in the past where then we've had to go back and value and engineer buildings and then rebid them or improvements, not just buildings. Um, there was one instance right after, right when I started the city, which was 14, 15 years ago, where the water plant had an improvement that came in much higher than the budget, and they went back and did some redesign. The redesign's not free, but then rebid it and got a much, a, a price that was much more in line with the budget. So it does happen. Uh, quickly, Councilmember Kelly. I guess um, I would love to hear more from our good volunteers and folks who work at the animal shelter and hear really minimally what's absolutely needed. And I've done some, I toured it, but I, I think that's kind of what I want to know in terms of RFPing so that, we, you know, I feel like there's sort of the ideal and then there's, you know, the basics, what we need. And then we have to weigh that against our own priorities as a city, um, against all of our needs and priorities. So, and I think there, there's a great range. Council, I may have missed Council Member Reed. Did you have a question, comment? Yes, it's the, the perils of being virtual. Uh, sometimes the chair doesn't check their, their, their text. Uh, uh, so I had a question a, a lot earlier, so now it's going to seem somewhat uh, strange going this far back. But uh, I'm curious. Uh, the there's a cost for uh zoning i have a few other things but just re really quickly on this one uh 
there's a cost for zoning that was included. Uh, what, what was that cost uh, for the going through the zoning process? Um, the, the project is in an unusual space in a zoning yeah. overlay district, so they will have to do additional studies and attend additional meetings and answer questions in order to meet the requirements that are laid down by the zoning yeah. overlay district. Uh, what is the cost roughly? Uh, 14000 14000 I'm I'm wondering, uh, certainly we can't or can't or shouldn't do uh, spot zoning, but what, you know, as a quick kind of fixed for this project and kind of looking forward, could, could we exempt uh, city facilities from having to go through this process? Is that Director Niden. heard of? Uh, good evening again. Um, Johanna Niden, Community Development Director. So we do have something called the Municipal Use Exemption, but the last time we used it was when um, we did the water pumping facility that um, on McDaniel and Church, and there were great concerns expressed at the time for the use of that, um, for for um, not basically circumventing a process. So um, from that point forward, we decided that we would go through regular city processes, zoning approvals, um, and so in this case, plan developments are in this location, so we're going to follow through with that. Councilman Reed. Yeah, thank you. I'm just wondering if we could save ourselves, uh, you know, quite a bit of money. But I, I hear you yeah, on that. Um, okay, and then also uh, to uh, some of the concerns that were raised earlier. I mean, uh, well, you know, I, I'll, I'll debate here. We've had a pretty good discussion on this. I, I, I think we uh, can move forward. I think what uh, you know, folks proposing to to get the numbers from uh, other communities and maybe understand the pause project or find uh, another comparable project uh, would, would be great. I mean, I think the council made it clear our direction at the last meeting that we discussed this, that uh, we'd be moving forward with the middle ground level, which I think commits the city to about $4 million or commits the city to three to $4 million, uh, depending on what uh, the, the shelter folks can raise. I, I am curious to uh, see when we're going to get an update on their fundraising, um, but that that's those are that's really my only new concern to add. Uh, they so in our uh, budget packet for November fifth, we also submitted their fundraising plan, and it's feasible for them to come back and do a budget update at a future time, um, probably when we get some time has passed and we get closer to um, going out for bid. To, to see where they're at. Okay, thank you. I think that is all. Um, any other? Yeah, so can we call the question? All right, we're ready to call the question. Thank you, Laura. Councilmember Kelly? Um, no. Councilmember Braithwaite? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Reed? Aye. Right, and that leaves us, I think, one more. Is that A10? A10, approval of change order number two to the contract with Central Rug and Carpet Company for the Fire Station 4 Interior Renovations Project. Uh, can someone move that, please? Second. All right, discussion? Just thank you to uh, the carpet company for absorbing that $51,569 for the change order. I wasn't really clear what that was, but I'm glad that they did it. So thank you. Councilmember Braithwaite? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Reed? Aye. Councilmember Kelly? Aye. Uh, we have no other business. Uh, so do we have? Oh, we got H. Oh, we got bodies for consideration. Sorry about that. Um, there it is. So, Mr. Chair, I'll move item A22, Ordinance 121-0-21, amending the City Code Section 10-4-1, stopping, standing, or parking or parking prohibited in specified places, and 10-4-2, obstructing traffic. 
All right, discussion. Councilmember Newsma. Mr. Rivera, a quick overview of this one. Sure. If you Hello, Mike Rivera, parking division manager. Um, so this we are looking to assess um, increased fines from $55, 50 and $55 to $75 for certain uh, violations that would be uh, parking within an intersection, within a crosswalk, between a safety zone adjacent to uh, adjacent to a curb alongside any street ex with has excavation upon a bridge upon a con controlled access highway in the area between a divided highway on a parkway under a fire escape near a fire hydrant within 20 feet of a fire station in front of a public driveway or any place where official signs prohibit stopping standing parking the fines are currently 55 but should be increased to 75 um, so basically, um, we are looking to increase a, a select under this title, under Title 10-4-1. Um, about a year ago, the city had increased some fines, and we were looking not to increase all the fines associated with this uh, ordinance schedule. So we were trying to target the ones that um, may potentially put pedestrians in the most uh, adverse situations, uh, causing harm to pedestrians, and that's why we were looking to increase these certain fines. So it's not it's not all of them. There's still just there's still an array of fines that we're not proposing to raise uh, the fines and the fee amount. And if this were approved, uh, approximately what would the additional revenue be to the city? Uh, additional revenue. Give me one second, please. Uh, using 2021 data, the additional revenue would be approximately. Uh, $59,000. I'm also concerned about uh, about the equity impact of this and you know 55 bucks is uh, a lot of money uh, for some people 75 is even more money uh, for a lot of people and uh, so I asked you earlier and you provided a heat map of where tickets uh, have been issued um, which Personally, I would like to take a little bit more time to uh, to explore that uh, that concept before approving this. Um, that kind of my take. I'll defer to my colleagues if they have something else to sure, say. Sure, sure. And, and and just so that you know, the me the the heat map that I that I uh, provided you did it did it single out any one location with regards to the city, or did it look pretty um, holistic of tickets being issued all throughout the entire? City? There were there were very marked clumps. Um, in, throughout all of Evanston. Well, in in hard to tell with yeah with the maps that I saw, okay. but yeah, it was it was not evenly spaced. There were definitely some hot zones. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Reed. Yes. Uh, speaking of that, actually, I'll start with this, Councilmember Newsma. Thank you for uh, forwarding that information. Uh, particularly uh, speaking to the heat map that was provided, I do wish. Uh, we could get uh, a, a, a different kind of heat map. I'd love to see it layered a bit better to see, you know, it's very clear that there are areas, as Councilman Newsom pointed out, where there are pockets um, of high concentration. And yes, there is, uh, you know, those red, deep red dots across the city, but I, it's still not very clear. There isn't a gradient to say, all right, this red spot means that there's, you know, a thousand tickets being issued here and then this red spot means that there's a uh, hundred tickets um, and so I, I would like that clarification to, to understand a bit deeper uh, have a deeper understanding of how uh, the distribution of tickets play out plays out uh, across the city but um, in this instance we're talking about tickets that are relating to uh, safety and so you know I heard uh, you know equity brought up there uh, you know, we ha we have to be thinking about that. You know, I've put in a proposal to look at uh, parking tickets and other things, but here we're talking about parking on a sidewalk. Uh, I think it's fairly easy to avoid, you know, parking on a sidewalk or, uh, you know, parking in some of these other hazardous place places. I, I am supportive of holding off on this, uh, at least for, you know, one meeting. I, I would like to see a, a kind of clearer list. I would have loved to have seen a chart that said, here are all of the um you know uh places where we're going going to increase the fine here's what the fine is currently here's what it will be and here's where this uh this this item or this charge uh this infraction is uh spelled out in code 
So I, I'd love to see that because that would just help me wrap my head better around it. it. It's kind of hard to, you know, in the form that it's in to fully understand exactly which fees are increasing and which ones aren't. Um, so I, I, I'd be supportive of temporarily holding off on this. Um, what, what is the, again, we, we particularly, uh, you know, tickets like this, uh, you know, when it comes to safety and parking and street sweeping, those tickets aren't supposed to be revenue generators. Um, but I am curious what the budget impact is of, of this proposal, if, if you haven't said that already. Sure. So, uh, Council Member Reed, so the budget impact would be approximately $59,000 based on on 2021 data had we had we in implemented the the increase using 2021 data the the impact would have been fifty nine thousand dollars if this was in place for all of 2021 um that would that would have been and then with regards to the heat map um council member Nuzma, you know uh, attempted to contact me earlier today through the city manager and, and this was something that i was able to to get for him um rather quickly um i think what makes some the most sense would be to maybe pinpoint the 10 frequently issued citations and then run a heat map off that uh, and, and bring back data if that's uh, what you feel appropriate. Also, the other thing is that I would like to highlight is that the clusters, uh, you know, this heat map was of all citations. So this is all citation types, which we have many in the city of Evanston, but the most uh, uh, popular citation, the, the, the two most popular citations that we have in all of the city of Evanston is one is the expired parking meter and two, the um, citation for uh, exceeding the time limit. So like in our in our business districts, we have a two hour time limit. So if you exceed that two hour time limit, that ticket is $40, we issue a lot of those. And then the expired meter. So when you look at the, the heat map, for those who have, who have been privy to the heat map, um, that's predominantly, you know, the, the clusters correlate with business districts and those business districts do have uh, metered zones. Councilman Reed, anything else? Uh, no, thank you very much. Councilmember Kelly. So I had asked um, the um, resident speaker, Mr. Hubbard, is that right? If he had a, um, a couple of thoughts as to how to potentially improve this proposal. And, and I'm just going to say that um, is, is that we're with you. So don't think you have to justify any account. You can just give us okay. rapid fire bullet. Boom, 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 boom. Great, exactly great. what you uh, think if, we can do. If, if, I, if I may jump in, he, during public comment, uh, Mr. Hubbard gave a, a really good suggestion. And one, I think it is absurd uh, that there is no law uh, about parking in, the, in bike lanes. And so. All right. Thank you. I, I, I do want to say really quickly, I think I gave the wrong impression before. I think one of the council members thought I was saying uh, Mr. Rivera doesn't do a good job. I think Mr. Rivera does a great job. Unfortunately, there's only one of him. And some of the people actually writing tickets are not maybe doing what he tells them to. Um, Don, to answer your question, there, there is currently no law against park, parking in bicycle lane. I don't think it makes sense to have bicycle lanes, but no law against parking. So I would suggest that there's a law that says if you park, in all or part of the bicycle lane, you get a $75 fine. Um, and I hope that generates no revenue at all. I would prefer that nobody parks in the bicycle lane. If you don't have 75 bucks, don't park in the bike. And most of the ones who park, honestly, the UPS trucks, Amazon trucks, they're not Evanston residents. So I, I would say that. As far as sidewalks, um, I think there should be a 75, at least a $75 fine for parking the sidewalk. Again, if you don't have the money, don't park in the sidewalk. Same with the crosswalk. You know, you park in a crosswalk, somebody can get killed because of that. 75 bucks is nothing, even compared to the charge for the ambulance to take you to the hospital. Same with parking in the parkway, $75. And uh, um, I think that's, that's, I think that's the ones, the sidewalk, the parkway, the crosswalk. And there should be a law against parking in the bike lane. That's what I would suggest. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilmember Newsom. Uh Well, Councilmember Kelly, because you, you didn't Kelly finish. First. Right. So yeah. I appreciate that. And I'd, I'd be interested to hear if, I, I mean, I would be supportive of amending this to include. Sorry, what? Sorry Mike. I, I, I left something out. I'm a little nervous. Uh, you know, I read through the proposed ordinance. 
and I'm pretty sure it does not ra raise penalties for parking on the sidewalk or the parkway or the crosswalk. Something got left out somewhere. In the current law, all those, those violations don't have fines specified. And then at the very end of the parking law, there's a clause that says penalties. And it basically has a default penalty for anything not specified is $50. So I think that was supposed to be changed, but it was, it's not in the, what I see online. Thank you. Councilman Kelly. Um, yeah. Good. Councilman Newsom. It seems like this one maybe needs a little bit more work. So I'm going to make a motion to hold this. And I, I, if I understand correctly, a second, uh, if somebody seconds I'll that, second. it'll be held until the, our next meeting. Um, the point of order, uh, motion to hold is not in order in committee uh, because that is a council rule and not a rule of the committee. <laughs> I was hoping uh, you would clarify that. Rest. I mean, and also this is just for introduction, so do we not think that we can, we can table sort it. it out between now and the next meeting? What what procedural options do we have? Tabling, I think. Council yes, comments. Tabling is an option. All right, I'm sorry. So we, we could pass it tonight and then fix it uh, before it comes back. You want to do that? I'd say table it. I mean, and okay, all right. Same thing. Uh, point. I would like to say that, you know, as, Council, as Chair Burns uh, just pointed out, you know, I think this is a small enough issue that it can be potentially addressed between introduction and action. Um, but I mean, certainly. That, yeah, that, that would be my recommendation. If, if everyone's again. comfortable with that, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. All right. So the motion has been withdrawn. Uh, can we get a, I don't see any other uh, lights on. So can we call the question? Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Reed? Aye. Councilmember Kelly? Aye. Councilmember Braithwaite? Aye. Okay, um, and last, uh, 823. Um, also, item for consideration, ordinance. Mr. Chair, just very briefly, if the intent was to leave it in committee, you just passed it for introduction, so it's going to go to council for introduction. So if you want to leave it in committee. I asked that question a few minutes ago. Yeah. We, we, they said it would come back here for action first. No. Somebody said that. Okay. No. So if it, was an, if it was just for discussion, it would come back to committee. But since it's for introduction, it's going to go to city council for introduction. The, um, if you wanted to leave it in committee, then uh, when, Mr., when Councilmember Newsma withdrew his motion, I thought the motion was to actually introduce A22. And that would have taken it off the table for any sort of action. It would have just stayed in committee. Um, but I didn't know what the motion was you made because I walked in the room late. So I apologize. So what it was the right motion. motion? What was the correct motion to make? If he would have just it to leave it in his committee to introduce it at all, it would have just stayed in committee. Oh, I see. Okay. Do, do you Do you want to do a? Do we need to do a reconsideration? Yeah. Like yeah. Who to reconsider? Who wants to make that motion? I'll make that motion. All right. Can you make it? No, they can. I, I move to reconsider the vote we just made on A22. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any discussion? All right, let's call the question. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Reed? Councilmember Kelly? Aye. Aye. Councilmember Braithwaite? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Okay, so, All right, so that's now we just me. leave it here. No, now I'd like to okay. make a new motion to table it. She can, that's, that's fine as well. Uh, Councilmember Kelly makes a motion to table uh, this until the next A AP twenty two, yeah, which is November twenty second. Point of information: Point of information. That the idea was that between the time since it was a, a fairly, I mean, we can send it back to committee. But uh, you know, I think uh, since it's a fairly minor change, I, I thought that we were agreeing that it could be changed uh, between. The time that it's you know introduced to council and and uh, or not introduced but before it's for action at council. I agree. Let's let's call the question so we can move on uh, and see where, or yeah, because their motion is on the floor. So I guess we need a second. So is there a second for Councilmember Kelly's motion? Yeah, it's to void the motion. Is this a this okay, is a motion, a motion right to, to table? table it, okay. But just to understand so that it comes back to APW, so we're not taking up council time. So we work this out here. So a table brings it back to, to AP. I thought you said we just leave it. Okay. So if we table it, it brings it back to the next 
ANPW meeting. Okay. Is but there then a... that'll also require two readings of council. So this will, instead of being <laughs> yeah, but we will slowed down by. How do we just get it back here without, can we get it back here without tabling it? So since you already took action and now that action has been reconsidered and now has to be tabled. So for example, for 823, if 823, you didn't, you wanted to discuss it, but you didn't want to introduce it and send it to council, you wouldn't make a, mo a motion to introduce it. You understand what I'm saying? You would, there would be no motion to take an action on it if you wanted to leave it here. The problem is 822, there's already been a motion and an action taken. That action has been reconsidered, so now you have to table it in order to keep it in committee. If you had not taken a motion to take any sort of action on it, then you could have just left it in committee. But there's already been a motion and it's now been reconsidered. But there's, there's no way to have it come back to committee for action with the changes in place. So right, by moving it, by, by moving it, to, I'm sorry, go ahead, come, come. I was gonna say by moving it for introduction now, it's gonna to go to council for introduction and then go and then be in council for introduction and action. So you'll vote on this for introduction, it would go to council tonight for introduction and come back on the 22nd for action. So the council member reads point, you could still take that action and anything be worked out between intro and action on the 22nd. But my understanding from listening to you guys is you wanna leave it in committee for that to be worked out. To I mean, sure we could it. just leave it in council as well we don't have to leave it in committee i'm i'm fine with i mean the changes answer. will be we move it on the council we you community we already communicated the changes that you'd like to see well, no, um, I mean, we, you can continue to after the meeting and then we it comes back to council and we can change and we can vote on it then is that fine okay which is the vote we just so now we need to, to reconsider. Which, which was the original vote. Yeah, that was originally what I was. Yeah, so let's just for. vote again. Okay, we'll so let's vote reconsider. again. You can so call you can the, move 822 back. We're moving 822 yeah. now. So move. we are again moving 822. We're moving. Uh, and just just um, real quick, because that was a lot. So for folks at home, we are moving once again 822, um, amending city code section 10-4-1, stopping, standing, or parking prohibited in specified places and 10-4-2 uh, for obstructing traffic. Uh, a few council members have indicated that they, they will um, work with staff to make changes in between um, uh, now and the next city council meeting. We are gonna pass this on to council and uh, again, communicate those changes in between the next council meeting and then hopefully vote on it at the following council meeting. Um, Luke. Councilmember Reed. Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Councilmember Kelly. Aye. Councilmember Braithwaite. He's good. He said aye. Thumbs up. Aye. Councilmember Newsma. Aye. Councilmember Burns. Aye. <clears throat> uh, 823, uh, Ordinance 122 21 amending various sections of City Code 10. Dash eleven dash twelve parking meter zones. Can someone make the motion? So move for approval. Second. Is there a second? I think I actually I can second things too. I'm gonna start doing it. Um, discussion. Councilman Braithwaite, do you have any? Who pulled? Uh, this wasn't a pull. This is just I have consideration. Okay. Uh, seeing no questions or comments, can we call the question, Luke? Councilman Kelly. Aye. Councilmember Braithwaite. Aye. Councilmember Newsma. Aye. Councilmember Burns. Aye. Councilmember Reed. Aye. Council's starting to do five minutes. Is that enough? Five minutes is six twenty-five. All right. Uh, seeing all the business, the meeting is adjourned.